Let's review value of commands. Once again, we have a transform, and the transform starts with a style sheet root command. A root tag under the root tag is a, tr is a template command. Under the template command, we mix HTML and XSL commands. And as we scroll down here, we see the very first thing in our um, transform is an H1 tag that says XSL value of. Don't be confused, that's just HTML. And under that, absolute paths, there's three things that I want to go over. I want to go over, actually, five things I want to go over uh, value ofs in absolute path, value ofs that use absolute paths value ofs that use relative paths, value ofs in an attribute, and then a couple of bad things that happen if you don't use the value ofs quite right. After that, we'll talk a little bit about copy of commands that aren't that important to us, and so they're really easy to cover. Okay, value of is the most important command. It's the command that we're going to use the most times in this course, and it does the most basic function, which is reaching into an, excess, uh, reaching into an instance file and pulling out a value. So when I see XSL value of, that's what flashes through my mind. Reach into an instance file and pull out a value. Now in this case, this is the instance file, sample, in, sample info type and access structure.xml. And what do we want to pull out? We want to pull out forward slash prototype, forward slash about, forward slash title. I hope, I hope you remember that when you see that first forward slash, it's an absolute path, which means no matter where you are, no matter what the current node is, this path will work. It starts from the back, the forward slash, that, that, the thing that precedes the root node. So if I look in my uh, sample info type and access structure XML, I can see forward slash, let's see, uh, sorry, forward slash prototype, which is the root tag, forward slash about, forward slash title, forward slash about, forward slash title. So we have Michelle's movie recommendations. So in this transform, we have a P tag, and in that P tag should say Michelle's movie recommendations. And sure enough, if I switch over to the um, output, you can see up here at the top, XSL value of, that's just flat text, absolute path, that's flat text. These are both just HTML, and then there's the value that I pulled out of the instance. Okay, now, that's an absolute path beginning with a forward slash. Now a relative path. The relative path does not begin with the forward slash and is relative to the current node. Now what is the current node here? If you remember our discussion of current node, there is a couple of things that set the current node. Chief among them is the match quality of the template. So notice the template set the match, qual the, the match pattern to forward slash that means while we're in this template, unless something else changes a current node, the current node is forward slash. That's right before the root, so we don't have to specify it. Notice in the absolute path, we have to specify it. In the relative path, we don't have to specify it because we're already at this point. So if I want to be absolutely sure, I use the absolute path. If I know where I am, I can use a relative path. Relative paths are usually better because they're more portable. No matter where you move this command into, uh, 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 yeah. This will always be relative to the current node. Enough said about that. Okay, so under relative paths, I expect to see that same thing again, that same Michelle's movie recommendations. And there it is under relative path. That's the HTML. Here's the value that got pulled out of the instance. Once again, here's the instance. Here's the value. And that value got pulled out by this command, XSL value of. XSL value of says pull out a value, and the select says where to pull it out from. Okay, one more thing, or the next thing, is if I have an attribute, how do I do that? How do I pull out the how do I pull out a value and put it in the attribute of an HTML tag? Notice this is an image tag. Image tag has a title attribute. Title attribute has a value, and you might be you might be tempted to just do this. Put in XSL value of right into that right between the quotes there, because that's what I want. I want the value of the title to stick it in this little title attribute. But look what happens when I do that. I get a syntax error. The reason I get a syntax error is because I've tried to put a tag inside an attribute, and we all know that tags don't aren't allowed to go inside attributes. So instead, the creators of, a, of, of XML invented a different little syntax with these curly brackets. The curly brackets you should read as value of, and whatever's inside the curly brackets is the X path. So this command right here is completely the same as this one right here.
In fact, actually, it's using the absolute path, so it's the same as this one on line 14. It's exactly the same command, it just uses a different syntax so that you can put it inside the attribute. Okay, two things to talk about that are likely to hit you. Um, so I'll introduce them now and make sure that you get the idea. The first thing is, what happens if you put in an XPath that returns multiple elements? So here's our XPath right here. Prototype, info type, movies, movie title. And let me show you that that will return multiple elements. So we have info type, movies. Here's a movie. It has a title right there. Here's a movie. It also has a title. So when I put that path in, there's multiple things that will come back. And so let me just show you this little editor right here. So I can type in my X path there, hit return, and notice I get back 15 different items. So when I run this value of command, it says, okay, well, I'm going to do just what you told me to. I'm going to pull out the value of every title under movie, under movies, under info types, under prototype in the, at the root node. So when I run this, let me switch over to my output. When I run this, notice I have bad things happen when the XPath returns multiple elements, and I have all the titles jammed together. So I just get every single title of everything, every single movie all jammed together. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to put a select statement that returns multiple elements, like this one. There are multiple titles, so this XPath will return multiple elements, and the value of will just do what you said to do, which is put them all out there. So we have one paragraph with all the titles in it. Not a good thing. Okay, bad things also happen when you try to do a value of on an element with multiple children. So let's look at this element. So it's a particular element. Notice how I put in ID equals this, which restricts it to only one movie, whereas here we had all the movies. So we're only getting one movie, but we want the value of the description. Now when I go into the value of the description for this movie, here it is right here. And here's the description. Notice that the description is pretty long. I mean, it goes from line 37 all the way down here, right, to line uh, 50. That's a big, fat description with lots of subtags in it. But yet I'm saying value of description. So what is the value of the description? Well, it turns out that if you do a value of on a tag, uh, on an element that has child elements, it's going to give you the values of all the child elements. Now, for some reason that I think is really inconsistent, it doesn't give you the value of the child attributes. I think it actually should to be consistent. However, that's not the way they designed it. They designed it to give you the value of all the child elements. So when I go over here and I run this right here, value of, it's a particular movie, but I want the description. It's going to give me every child text node of every descendant of the description. Let's see what that looks like. Here I am. So bad things happen when you try to do a value of on an element with multiple children. Notice it took every bit of text under the description and jammed it all together. What happened to all my bullet lists? What happened to my, look at all the structure I have here. I have paragraphs, I have bullet lists, I have all of this stuff in here, and it all got crunched out because you said value of. So there are other ways of dealing with this situation, of putting this out in a way that looks good. We'll see one of them in just a moment. But the value of is not the way to do that. So once again, bad things will happen if you try to do a value of on an element that has multiple children. Only do value ofs on elements that have only text nodes under them. Otherwise, it'll crunch out all the child elements, and that's not what you want to have happen. Furthermore, don't, bad things will happen if you return multiple elements. Notice how this XPath restricts us to a single movie, and that's a good thing, whereas this XPath does not restrict us to a single movie, so it returns too much. Okay. One quick and dirty way around the problem that I just mentioned is to use a copy of. The copy of command, the XSL copy of command, simply takes all of the tags and puts them out into the output. So what we have here is an XSL copy of. What do I want a copy of? Now think about it, copy of. It's just literally taking a copy of whatever it finds in the instance and putting it, puts it into the output. Well, copy of what? Prototype, info type, movies. It's this MXPR movie description forward slash star. The forward slash star says every child of description. Just grab every child of description and put it out. So when I grab every child of description and put it out, it's going to look like this. Here are all the children of description. And it'll take all of those and it'll paste them into the output. Now it just so happens that that's a good thing to do, pasting these into the output, because they're all already HTML tags. Notice we have P's, U's, L's, and no other tags in there. No tag, 
that the browser will not recognize. So this is an okay thing to do. If I had tags in here that the browser couldn't recognize, and I have to further process them somehow in order to get them to turn into HTML, this would not be a good idea. But this is a very simple circumstance. I have only tags that are HTML under this description, so I can use the copy of, and it'll literally paste those into the output. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So here's my copy of. Notice here's a paragraph, and here's all of my bullets. They came out just right because they happen to be HTML commands already. Okay, so going back over this, we talked about the value of command, and we talked about the, um, the copy of command. The value of command can take an absolute path if you want to absolutely be sure of what you're getting. It can take a relative path if you already know what the current node is. You use a special syntax to put it into the to put it into an attribute, and here's the special syntax right here. Um, you can do you can go wrong in two big ways. If your XPath returns multiple elements, you can go wrong. And if your XPath is or if your if your XPath returns an element that has multiple children, you can go wrong. One way I showed you to avoid the multiple children problem, if and only if, and this is really important, if and only if you only have HTML in your, uh, in, your, in your instance, then you can use this copy of command. Other than that, the copy of command is not very useful for creating HTML. You can imagine, only if you already have HTML is the copy of command useful for creating HTML. All right.